at which funeral? At Penn's. And did you attend the funeral? Yes. The funeral was at Penn's funeral? Well, no, the actual funeral was in Branson Church. The, the wake was at Hamlet. And after the funeral in Branson, where did you go? We went to Mount Cemetery. And after the cemetery, where did you go? I went back to his house. What did you do there? I resided there for the next week. Did you remove anything from the home? Uh, yeah, a few pictures. A few pictures? Yes. that your dad died, that he was buried, and you walked in this courthouse to try to be appointed administrator of his estate. Is no, that right? I did not. What did you come here for? To get uh, copies of the uh, deeds of the estate. Did you talk to anybody out here in the clerk's office about being appointed administrator? No, I did not. You didn't, you didn't talk to Cheryl Kaiser <coughs> about being appointed? No, I did not. I want to show you, and uh, gentlemen of the commission, I will provide a copy of this list. But this is a list that is entitled List of Items Michael Dell Agnes Has Taken. I want you to look at that list. Take your time and, and read it to your satisfaction. this. You recognize the items that are described on that list, which are probably 30, 30 <laughs> items. Yes. And you recognize those would be, that would be representative of items that your father owned at the time he died. Is that yes. correct? And did you, in fact, remove those items from his home and take them to Ohio? I believe this hearing is uh, in question of the will at this moment, is it not? Well, Judge, I think it's cross-examination. I should have a right to impeach the witness. Well, I do think we're deviating a little bit from the purpose of the hearing. Yes. Yes. Oh. Is he to answer that question? I don't think he has to if he doesn't want to. Okay. At this time, I wish not. Okay. Thank you. Now, I'd like to have a copy of this. You have to give me a copy. I only have this one right now. <clears throat> Well, I think the issue is all the belongings, once it's decided who is to be responsible for the estate, then that will be an issue that will be brought up later. I I'll have no further questions of him at this time. Okay. Uh, just one clarification. We talked about the surgery on the shoulder two times. When was that? He had two surgeries, and um, I believe one of them was, the first one was in 2003 or four. I don't have the records with me. I didn't know this one would be bad. But um, I would like to address the court. Well, both the surgeries prior to the wheel that's what I really want to make sure. And he, there was a 60% chance he would never get the use of his arm, his right hand back at the, uh, 
we handle them. Um, my name is Tanya Hicks, and my husband's Ken Hicks, who owns the law office. I'm not an attorney. I'm a paralegal there, an office manager. But it's my husband, and he would be here today. But um, we got notice of this. Actually, I never got notice. She got notice on Saturday, and my husband's in, out of state on another case. And um, Michael Ralph, um, he um, came to, which you all probably know, my my brother-in-law, Mike Frogel, represented him in a criminal matter over the vote fraud here in Lincoln County. We represented him on a civil matter when he fell down the steps. Um, he asked us to represent him in his divorce against Kay. And at that point, I told him, I said, Ralph, I, we can't. We don't do divorces, but I love Kay. And, um, you know, what's between you all, we can't do that. However, he asked me to do, um, my husband to do a will for him. Um, he said he had another will, and uh, he wanted us to do a new one because it was quite old. <coughs> well, so we did, and I believe it was in September of 06. We had settled his case. He was coming in to get his um, settlement proceeds, and uh, three paralegals, two paralegals and one attorney in our office, which I have affidavits. Two of the paralegals are still with us at our office. The attorney, Charles Garns, has left us with another law firm. And um, I had them do affidavits. The day that Ralph signed this will, they all acknowledged that. My husband prepared it, he was there. Ralph couldn't read or write, he wrote very little. I had to read him the will that day. I ask him if you'll notice in the will, normally you'll have two executors on a, a will. I asked him if he wanted another one because I said, Ralph, what if something would happen to Joe? He said, honey, I can't trust no one else. And he told me the reason, and I really don't want to bring that out here. But I don't have a dog in this fight or a horse in this race. You know, we presented the will, we, and I asked Michael, John, and Joe, at the time when he, he passed away, I said, do you all know where the will is? And they said they were going to look for it. They, they all went together to the safety deposit box to try to look for the will. They found a will, the will in 1981 that Mr. Griffith prepared that was unsigned. And they said, no, we cannot find the will. I said, look in his house. because. When he was in our office that day, um, I told him to put it in the safety deposit box. The paralegal in my office, Anita said, you know, Tanya, Anita Kerr, who has an affidavit here, she said, I think Ralph told me to put that in his file, to keep it in his file. Well, if I, I had left the room and was with another client, or I would have told him, you know, we destroyed those files after 10 years. So I would have told him, but she went ahead and put it in the file. We, and, uh, we found the will after they had searched, and I had asked them to search, and I told them then. They brought up that, the, that Ralph had had another will done. Well, I think if Ralph would have had another will done, he would have came to us because I did it free. However, I said, go to Mr. Stevens' office. Go to Mr. Griffith's office. Look for the will. If it's there, then present it if he wanted to give his credit.